Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Mateo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. This season of the No BS Pod is proudly brought to you by our friends Beyond and Costco. Beyond offers you the tools you need to get, grow, and optimize your revenue. And Casa Go's best-in-class tech streamlines operations for the local traditional vacation rental management company, making them the local heroes with a global presence. Our podcast is not possible without the generosity of our sponsors. Make sure to check out their exclusive offers specifically geared for our No BS listeners. I have a question for for all of you. You know what? You know Sarah brought up a great point. What are you? What resources are you using, and how are you collecting data? And then, and the, to take it a step further, you know, if you are collecting data, how are you going ahead and, and, and presenting that data in a way that is digestible from these, uh, you know, those that are against you? So we were really successful at getting the uh, local government to do that data for us. Um, we, you know, in having that discussion about the value that we bring, um, one of the things that I pointed out was that, you know, we're a business just like small businesses that you might go downtown and see us on the street. And those, those people are celebrated. They, maybe they have a ribbon cut for them and an article in the paper and they're in the chamber of commerce. But when a short-term rental gets their permit, you're given a list of no, 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 don't, don't, don't. And by the way, good luck, <laughs> because if you don't comply, we're going to take your permit. And again, this goes back to like, we have a right to ask our local government who's taking our money for assistance. And so if you're, what we did do is a little pushback and say, if you don't do the data and you take everything away prematurely, you will have an issue that's legal. We didn't threaten with an attorney, but there was an issue of takings and if they're smart, they're going to do their diligence so that they could prove their point. And what happened in Clatsop County is the data showed that we we were, weren't uh, creating a housing crisis. They did a heat map of where all of them they were. Uh, I think we're less than one percent of the total housing. Um, they looked at the sales. In the last few years of rent of um, homes, how many of them became short-term rentals when they sold? Yeah. And then where, how much did they cost? And what was the median income for this community? And would those people have been able to afford those homes? So those were all really good wins that we had. And we also have uh, in the ordinance built in is a, a complaint form where people have to make an official complaint. And now we also even have um, where if someone makes a false complaint, there is a fine for doing so. But the narrative has already been spun. And to answer some of this is that these are politicians. So the people that are voting are not our clients. They're not, um, they're not even me, perhaps, because my main home is in Portland. So the people that live here who are putting their head down working, the contractors, the housekeepers, they're not fighting for themselves because they don't even realize it's they're in jeopardy. I mean, for us, we stand to lose, I don't know, over 200 jobs. And as those trickle down to the independent contractors and, um, and businesses, retail businesses that get, you know, support from our industry, I mean, that's the narrative that Brian and I are faced against, and we have to flip it pretty quickly. But your your local governments, they're really just politicians looking to get reelected. And a lot of them, maybe they have political experience, but they don't have business experience. So when they make a decision, it's very, it's reactive management. I mean, in the end, 80% of new businesses fail. So why should they be any different? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you're looking for, you're looking for them to to bring awareness to your industry and tell them like, hey, if you change how many people are allowed in my rental, 
Um, like currently I have one that's 14, it'll go down to eight. Where are all the team sports going to stay come winter time? That hotel, my, hotel right. the, the big the big pockets that are but, helping behind these, it's of course. Yeah. <laughs> they can't actually a coach, a lot of these high schools have rules that the coach can't be separated from the team. And the team creates more issues in the city when they're not all under one roof. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of moms rent the house with another family for sporting events, girls softball, things like that. And so these are the things you have to say to your community. It's like, not just say, hey, this is gonna be taking money away from them. You have to equate it to, what's it taking away from their community? You know, and, and in the end, that's what the local people want too. They want you to be invested in a place that you're taking something from. They want to know why, because as Sarah said, they don't care about you and your rental. They care about what's its impact in the community. Yeah, as far as, oh, go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say the, you know, the data that we presented last night, the tack we took, you know, because this is a very, uh, uh, they talk about freedom and a lot of people wear their political bona fides on their, uh, on their, on their sleeve and talk about what it's about. So we're trying to pull on the levers of lesser government and low taxes, right? You know, trying to talk to the people and, and the way that they typically vote here on Marco Island. So we looked at, you can homestead your house in Marco Island and pay lower property taxes. So we looked at three different homes, a homestead at home. They're all, all worth $970,000. Uh, we happened to pick, and although we didn't mention him by name, one of the major proponents of this rental ban, uh, we took his house as, you know, but we didn't say we did. We just said it's his house worth $970,000 uh, and it's homesteaded. He's paying just over $6,700 in taxes. A rental home, you can't homestead it, you know, if you don't live in it for, I think you can only, you know, rent out two times a year in order, in order to keep your homesteading. Uh, that rental home is paying $10,271 in taxes. So a difference of just over $3,500. And then uh, since one of the most restrictive rental ordinances in the state of Florida is in Fort Lauderdale, which has a very different political leanings, and it actually tweaks the people that are pushing for this rental ban. And it's amazing. I don't know if you guys find this, how these rental restrictions can turn Democrats into Republicans and Republicans into progressives. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's just incredible this way. So we said, okay, since you're so enamored of Fort Lauderdale and their rental ordinance, which has been passed, but has not been enforced in cert for certain provisions because it would invite a lawsuit, what is a $970,000 homestead at home in Fort Lauderdale paying in taxes? It's paying over $18,000. So you've got $6,700, versus $18,100, it's a 270% delta. Mm -hmm. Is that what you want? So we're trying to pull on that and see if that helps. I, I know some people are gonna be too far in this argument and they're gonna go leave their house feet first. So we're not gonna reach them because they don't care what the value of their house is when, when they depart this earth, uh, just less maybe the kids get. So, but that's that was the, the attack we took last night, hoping that the city council will say, okay, wait, yeah, we're, we're gonna, it's a tight budget to begin with. What do we do in, in an era of lesser government? How do we have lesser government with less tax revenue? So and we know with AMSRA that, you know, you all have reached out to VRMA and you've gotten some help with them. Um, who, who here is, and if there's more, please, you know, I, I'm assuming that you guys are, have been diving in deep, but who are, are you, is everyone utilizing rent responsibly? Has everyone reached out and, and, in, in getting their assistance because, I mean, that's why they're here. I mean, it's one of the reasons why they're here. Are you guys familiar with Rent Responsibly? I'm not, no. Yeah, so they, no, they definitely they make that connection. Yeah, they were a big support for us uh, getting, getting the association put together, getting the structure put in place. Uh, make no mistake about it. Just like this podcast today, uh, they've got, you know, a bunch of experience in a lot of different cities and, and counties specific to what we're all going through. And so mm -hmm. they basically uh, assist with what they've learned and what they've experienced. So you're not kind of starting from square one. And so they were a huge part of, of us getting, frankly, you know, put together pretty quickly and organized and, and able to, to raise legal funds. Verma was pretty instrumental in contributing to a grant uh, that have provided for an economic impact study specifically to Atlanta. 
uh, that we've been able to use with the council members and, and, and for our, our kind of our public relations platform uh, that was specific to uh, the impact or the, the, the proven uh, non-impact of the pricing on affordable housing for the short term. There was no, cor no direct correlation as short-term rentals are increasing. Uh, it did not have an impact on uh, the sale prices or the affordability. Uh, as well as a specific uh, industry uh, economic study that looked at the impact uh, on uh, jobs, on different sectors, on tourism, on retail, uh, and how they would be uh, directly impacted to the tune of uh, 700 million uh, in revenue uh, in the event of uh, short-term rentals, uh, you know, going away essentially for the, the local impact. Uh, and so. They've also, just so you guys know, and for those of you guys active with your fights right now, uh, uh, Verma has raised on the national level, uh, last time I checked, it's probably higher now, but it was close to $700,000 uh, for funds that are specific for local jurisdictions and uh, local alliances like ours to apply for those funds. I think the recent deadline was July 11th to apply for that, uh, but they're gonna be rolling that out again in the fall and so I would encourage all of you as you're fighting these battles to make sure that you're you know, tapped into Verma. Uh, I know Mateo is very active on their committees, on their uh, regulatory committees, but um, it's definitely, we can't do this stuff alone uh, on the local level. And so their support is definitely something you should uh, tap into for sure. I, I was gonna say too, um, Scott Leggett with Inhabit has been a huge help to us. We reached out to him um, I reached out to him kind of the day of that we found out about this. Um, he got with Don and Habit is in the process of building our website um, and helping us get all of that stuff done so we can get our social media platforms going. Um, but inhabit has been a big help and leading us to Verma to help as well. So there I totally there is, agree, Brian. It was Scott that was, yeah. was kind of the spearhead for our help as well. So definitely. Yeah, they did the same. Uh, and Habit Scott and Scott. Sure. And they yep. they did exactly the same for AMSHA yeah. in terms of being able to give us the the technical infrastructure of a website structure. Um, and Scott was personally uh, it, what, the reason I joined the board um, and, and and was uh, able to help with AMSHA. So shout yeah. out to Scott for sure. And hey, question for you guys: What is the Verma money allowed to be used for? Because if it's allowed to be used for legal fighting, that's incredible because that's really hard to raise. And also. Is it, can it be used for an economic study done in your area? Yes. So the answer yeah. to the first part of your question is yes, it can be used for the studies, um, economic impact, housing, and others within your area. It cannot be used for legal funds. Uh, it can be used to support advocacy uh, and PR efforts. So, yeah, so, we, so for example, you know, sorry, Mark, but for example, just so it's crystal clear, uh, we had fundraising efforts for a legal fund to uh, engage with an attorney to file a legal action for a grandfathering lawsuit. Uh, the funds that we received are very specific, cannot be used towards that effort. However, uh, we hired a local lobbyist um, that's helping us with PR and communicating with the council members on ongoing advocacy. And uh, that uh, those types of, uh, I think it's around 5,000 a month as a retainer, and so they specifically earmark some of those funds to help us cover those expenses. Interesting. Have you spent hours determining what rate you should charge at your short-term rental property? Of course you have. This is a huge part of the vacation rental business, and it can be tricky knowing if your place is on par with other properties in the area. But now you don't have to wonder, you don't have to worry. And that's because it's so much easier pricing out your properties with Beyond Pricing. Here's how it works. Beyond uses a dynamic pricing tool along with in-depth market research to make sure your property gets valued exactly how it should be. They take dozens of factors into account, including your property's location, other rental rates in the area, any amenities on your property, nearby attractions, all of the things that most of us just wouldn't think about when pricing our own properties. That way you don't miss out on profits and your guests feel confident in the rate that they're paying so they come back again and again and again. That's a win-win and it gets even better. Beyond's platform is easy to use so you can save time and think about other areas of your business or enjoy your free time a little more now that you won't be stressing out about the rate you're charging. There's a reason why hundreds of single and multi-property owners trust Beyond's platform to determine what they should charge their guests. 
Beyond is dedicated to the short-term rental community. It's where their business was born and it's where they intend to stay. Don't wait, get the profits you deserve. Go to gobeyondpricing.com forward slash no dash BS for a free portfolio assessment and a $30 credit when you sign up. That's G-O dot B-E-Y-O-N-D-P-R-I-C-I-N-G forward slash N-O dash B-S. Thanks for listening. And now let's get back to the episode. So Brian and I, Brian and I created a logo and also um, I, we're, our site is going to be everyone for the North Oregon coast. So we'll be able to tag that and really get that into social media as we talk to our um, our locals who will lose their jobs and be affected by it. Um, signage. I mean, it sometimes it does just take the soldiers uh, to because in the end, just like Betty went to the Safeway and talked about it, so can you. Um, mm-hmm. And if you want to flip the narrative on on that, you t- start telling them how important you are to them and show it in a very economic way um you know i i believe we could get some headway with it um and if not perhaps even convincing them that our logo and things could be used for um like the stickers that are really popular on hydro flask and sweatshirts that uh could go to support some of the causes that we typically get blamed for um it'd be nice to see some of the the money go to uh, housing shortages and uh, homelessness. Uh, those are definitely advocacy type things that that you can do that get your name out there. I think that's the approach that we're taking right now is just a huge PR uh, flip switch and hoping that, that that works for us. And one of the big battles that we have, unfortunately, are this, this referendum affects unincorporated Clatsop County but everybody in Clatsop County gets to vote on. So even though in Cannon Beach and Seaside and Astoria, this referendum will not affect them whatsoever. But they they can vote on it. They can vote on it. So Mm -hmm. we have to flip that narrative so they understand that, you know, Bob and Sue down the street that live here in Cannon Beach, because they vote for it, doesn't mean we're going to ban vacation rentals in Cannon Beach. So it doesn't affect them at all. and, and I'm already working on that in neighborhoods and talking to people and saying, you know, if this comes to light, this isn't going to affect your life. It's not going to change it other than you're going to lose another server or you may lose something else because or your neighbor may be out of a job. I now employ 33 people yeah. and those 33 people are all going to get very boisterous about we're going to lose our jobs if you do this. Um, and those are people that I think to Sarah's point they really don't give a shit what we say as short-term rental manager owners property managers but they do care about you know bob and sue who have a small cleaning company and their neighbors and they go to church with them on sunday and if you're going to have them lose their jobs that's important to them. and so getting that information out is a big key for us as well so i think that is part of the biggest conundrum here brian and that is that I think it's the same in your place. There's the story of all these workers, all these jobs are created by vacation rentals. Oh gosh, don't lose the jobs. But where we live, at least there are so many jobs opened because we can't find workers. So the story that overwhelms that message is we need housing for those workers. Right. And then mm-hmm. everybody wants to stop to give them the housing especially the wealthy, so they can still have their servers, right? So they're like, yes, figure out how to house these people. We have plenty of jobs. And so that hasn't worked as well. And the other part politically that's happening here, Mark, you mentioned it, Republicans, Democrats, independents, they're all susceptible to being against vacation rentals if they have a bad egg next to them. So that's interesting too. And the other part we haven't discussed that is so big that I try to talk about a lot is that COVID made virtual workers, right? We just interviewed this guy, Greg Lindsay, that was the keynote at the uh, Expedia conference. And he's this brainiac that studies cities. And he said that 
remote workers has gone from 3% to 20. They think it'll probably come down to 10 to 15. That is a major shift. And those of us that live in areas where people want to live, like everyone's moved to Steamboat, everyone's moving to Marco Island. Why not? Right. But there are these people that are not part of the tourist community, but they want like these people you've mentioned that they want all the services and things. Right. But now they vote there. Mm -hmm. And so city council is hearing from them and now they care about them more than they care about the second homeowner. So let's put the tax. We got to be really careful about this momentum and steamboat across the country that go ahead and tax the second homeowner that's doing a vacation rental because they can't vote, right? Right. You're taxing a non-voting person, Mm -hmm. which somehow is legal. And the virtual worker is going to pay for that because now they don't have to pay for the services they get stick it on the second homeowner. Right. And also no one's talking in our city and won't ever admit that the reason the prices are going up so much in steamboat for housing is this virtual worker that has plenty of cash and is moving in. It's not that short-term rentals made the housing prices go up. There's no more short-term rentals in steamboat than there were five years ago. So you have to bring these points up because like Marie said, City council ha- mostly has not run businesses. They don't have this data in front of them. They're just getting pestered by their buddy that says it's loud next door. So they're going to put some regulations in, right? And not look at the whole economic impact of that. Um, and I just think that's important that, you know, let's face it, California has left California and they're coming to all of our areas. They love regulation in California. <laughs> So, I mean, we are just feeling that effect so much. It's, it's hard to watch. Hey, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Casago. And we- John, you mean Casago. No, I meant Casago. John, that's not how you say it. You got to get our sponsor's name right, man. Anyway, as I was saying before I got cut off, this episode is brought to you by Casago. And if you haven't heard of them, then here's the deal. Casago helps bring the biggest tech and strategy to the local operators so they can take on the big players. Casago's franchise model really does streamline the operations of the local and traditional vacation rental management company, making them the local heroes with a global presence. And the industry changing as much as it has, Casago's not only bringing these high-powered tools to the local operators, but they're also creating something even more powerful by making sure everyone is in the community and constantly learning from different markets and operators. We tell you this because they've joined us to get this exclusive offer just for checking them out a little bit more. Go to casago.com forward slash no BS. That is C-A-S-A-G-O dot C-O-M forward slash N-O-B-S to book your discovery call. What's included, you ask? A review of your business operation expenses to identify where you can save money, information on how to partner with Casago or Casago to scale your company, and a free $100 Amazon gift card for attending their one hour discovery call. Now let's get back to the pod. It's it's Casago. No, no, it's for sure Casago. You have no idea what you're talking about. It's Casago. No, dude, you're wrong. You're wrong. (sighs) Whatever, let's get back to the business. You know, another thing that you were, you touched base on was like that people can now make a complaint. But one of the things that I consult on people, uh, consult with people for is how do you, because in my consulting business, I look at if, if the neighbor or the surrounding neighbors have made a complaint against your rental, then you've already lost. So how do you keep how do you know before they know? And, um, you know, the, the, the measures that would work. And there's a lot of new things in our industry, like the noise aware. And, um, you know, there's a, a new product that can tell uh, by the CO2 in the house how many people are there. Um, these are things that should be part uh, that I think we could all agree, not only would support another company in our industry, but would help people understand that, even a great management company, they can't keep tabs on every single rental and see what's going on. But what I do is I urge um, homeowners who have a short-term rental to install cameras and watch how people check in, watch at key times during the person's stay, 
another time is also when the noise ordinance kicks in. Um, and then right around 1 a.m., I call the witching hour. You will learn so much about your guests. We're, one of the questions I ask people is like, how do you know you have no problems? And they'll often say, well, because we don't have any complaints. Like, you don't know what you don't see. And what we, when we did a study on ours, the things that we saw were insane. They were insane. So I know the problems are real. I've had, I had a guest who didn't know how to operate the, um, the storm door, go to their car and take off my door. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, Marie, I, th- I mean, I wonder if you've ever done this. I started to go to the neighbors when we took on a home and introduce myself yes. and give yep. them my card and say hello to them when we were over there and check in with them. Cause then they'll tell you their pl- problem versus the, when they make the final complaint to your point, it's all happening until it blows up. And then the right. owners, right. The, right. the neighbors, like I can't take it anymore. So that's another good way to Prevent. Well, I have a, a great, so when we were looking at that house in Surf Pines, I'm going to do a little shout out to John Weber, my neighbor here. Um, he literally came out when we were looking at the house and, and told us who he thought would be best to be his neighbor. Um, he's a, a retired narcotics detective. And I thought he was going to hit the ground when <laughs> he found out that we were going to be a vacation rental. Um, and I said to him, I'm like, John, listen, I'm, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about all the things that you're concerned about. And I'm going to address every one of them. And if you give me a year, if you don't, if you're miserable or this is impacting your life, I will gladly either move in or sell. And I, and we had a handshake and he now has coffee with my guests down at the lake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, I have it on recording, so he can never yeah. take it back that, right. that we should be the model for vacation rentals. Um, and during COVID, we brought him toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, one of the jokes I have with all of my, uh, my homeowners is they don't get my cell phone number, but their neighbors all do. Mm. Hey, yeah. That's, That's awesome. So I love their neighbors that. all have my cell yeah. number, but my owners don't. I don't need an owner calling me at seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday because he wants to come down. I right. do need a neighbor to call me at 10 30 at night when there's a noise problem. Yeah. So and and neighbors and neighbors appreciate that. Yeah. This has been amazing. I, I hate to have to cut we could talk for hours. Um and you know but I also have to keep in mind that this is a podcast and you know the attention span for a podcast is well we've wait, gone way past that but hopefully this is enthralling and great information and they're going to go ahead and listen right to the end. Uh with that said I do want to quickly go around and you know I want everyone that's listening to be you know what is your call to action right like you know, you're, you came on here to for a reason, and we appreciate you joining us. And, you know, but what could we go ahead and share or what link can we go ahead and put on our website? Um, and or who can we connect you with? Like, how can we help? And what are you looking for? So we quickly go around that quickly. And then uh, we're going to have to uh, exit today and we'll continue in the future. Uh, why don't we actually start with, uh, you know, the unincorporated class of county, Brian and uh, Marie. I would say get my takeaway is get involved before it's before it starts. Get get in on the ground issues and know what's going on. Because like Sarah said earlier, if it starts, it's too late for you to get involved. So that's my takeaway is is get involved early and let people know who you are and and be there to be there. Be the source for their questions on ways to help things. Do you you all have a website yet? Up. Uh- uh, it's, it's not up, but it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Marie. Uh, it's, I, I believe any time now, um, and it's everyone for the North Oregon coast. And so, yeah, I mean, social media, if you can hashtag it, um, take a beautiful picture, understand that families, hashtag families, because that's really who's going to lose here if we lose short-term rentals is families. Uh, and not just when they come to vacation, because, you know, a lot of our sporting events and competitions are done here. Uh, a lot of dance competitions for at the convention center. Um, 
it just, it, it's going to affect everyone. And I think the one thing we didn't talk about is that for us, the beaches here have always been public. In fact, a tra there's a travel site that has basically said that the Oregon coast was so extraordinary that we wouldn't dare limit it to anyone, that it's always been for everyone. And we're changing the, the message now. Um, and, and that's just not, it's just not Oregon. Yeah. Well, played. thank you. Is it so everyone for the North Oregon coast.com then is that what it's going to be? Yes. yes. Awesome. Um, how about you, Mark? Thank you. So I would say, uh, as far as our call to action, our website is keep Marco Island free.com. And so we have everything there from how to register to vote uh, in this upcoming election to how to donate and what this issue is. And then a couple of things that I'm thinking of as a result of this conversation is perhaps uh, in raising funds, adding a surcharge to each one of our bookings. I know we talked about that to fund efforts, but I'm wondering if that might be a way to put money in our coffers, each one of our property managers, and set this aside to create a, a defense fund. If this doesn't pass, we know there's still a fight ahead of us, and we need to continue what we're doing. And so I would love to be put in touch with Rent Responsibly, because I was not aware of that before getting on this call. So thank you in advance for that help. And just one other organization that I didn't hear uh, brought up that um, may be of value, it's the Goldwater Institute. And so the Florida Alliance for Vacation Rentals, which introduced me to this podcast, uh, has right. the Goldwater Institute that fights for <laughs> private uh, property rights. Right. And they're currently fighting Miami Beach. Apparently they've been successful and they continue to litigate. And apparently they've set their sights on Marco Island next that this should pass. So they apparently will help maybe uh, fund a, a lawsuit if it comes to that here, if this does pass. So I throw that out there because uh, that, that could be a big help to us here and we need it. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. If you all want to, we'll, we'll go ahead and put everyone's uh, LinkedIn, uh, you know, profile on there so if if you want um and Absolutely. then people can go ahead and, and message you um but we'll definitely connect you with uh yeah mark i'll, I'll make sure you guys get connected i'll connect yeah, you absolutely. with dave and uh dave and, dave you, and the team over Thank there no problem hey rick so uh amstra.org that's right org, and you know feel free uh to reach out to or to mateo if you guys need any uh you know insight or help uh, along the way um uh, you can reach my contact information. I know you put your LinkedIn stuff out there, but um, on my website, richmonroe.com, uh, richmonroe.com, it's got my contact info as well. Uh, there's also a link there to stay on if you want to touch base. And like I said, I'm happy to the folks in Philadelphia that are that are going through very similar things right now in Atlanta. And so it's, uh, it's a, it takes a village. So we're happy to help. So feel free to reach out. And Sarah? You want Thank my you words again. of advice? Yeah. yeah, words of advice. We know you're out. You're, you're just here doing your thing, but yeah, we appreciate still, you doing this. It still ticks me off. Um, I think that we all need to work together on something to attack this idea of taxing the second homeowner. T taxing short-term rentals is very dangerous right now. Also, we need to figure out a good way to fight uh, commercial tax rates not to be levied on residential because there's some movement there big time in Colorado. And that's really scary too. When you do the math, that would wipe out a lot of homeowners profits and ours uh, just because they wouldn't be renting anymore. And I guess my advice is don't take it negative. Please try not to. If you fight your city council or government body and they think you are going to yell at them and get crazy, they will not work with you. If you become friendly with them and show that you're trying to help them with solutions and give them information, then it's really hard for them to vote against you. It's like voting against a friend. So I, I encourage you to go that route. Thanks for having me on though. Excellent. Thanks again. We appreciate yeah. you. Um, if, if you like what you're hearing, uh, you know, definitely go ahead and, and listen and, and give a thumbs up if you're on whatever you know like listen subscribe you know, yep. smash that <laughs> like button however the kids do it these days i don't know uh thank you we appreciate you all for joining us
This podcast is a Hospitality.fm production.